and we're officially live. The first <laughs> Graphite webinar. Feels exciting. The structure we're going to proceed through is uh, first, uh, my teammate Jacob is going to give an overview of stacking and the Graphite tooling and how it helps with stacking. That's helpful uh, both for beginners and also folks who maybe are familiar with a little bit of it, but don't understand the full uh, aspect of the process. Then after that, and more to appeal to advanced users, I'm going to walk through some of Graphite more recent features and some of our upcoming roadmap. And that, that's going to be a great chance for people to ask questions uh, or flag things that they're really excited about or that they wish could be on our upcoming roadmap. And then, like I said, at the end, we'll just turn to free form questions. So, and just as it forms an introduction, uh, I'm Greg, I'm one of the co-founders and I lead engineering here at Graphite. And I've been working with Jacob for a few years now. He's created most of the Graphite CLI up to this point and is constantly in our community Slack. You may know him and his avatar, but this is your chance to, to see him speak live. Yeah, shorter hair now, I think, than the avatar I currently have in Slack. But yeah, thanks for the thanks for the intro, Greg. Like Greg said, I've uh, been at Graphite for a bit, spent a lot of time in the CLI, have also kind of all sorts of things here. But yeah, why don't we just go ahead and get started. So uh, today I'm going to give a brief overview for those of you who may be less familiar with stacking or, or haven't done it before, may have just heard about it. So I like to start this by defining what is stacking. Stacking is a Git development workflow where you create branches off of other branches. Why would you do that? to parallelize the review and authoring of code changes. And why should you care? Because you could be developing and releasing your code three times faster. And if you are saying to yourself, hey, I already make branches that are based on other branches, just wait, you'll see how Graphite can make this flow even better. So what does code review look like, the average code review look like today? You may write your nice feature, add a description. Our, our other coworker, Tomas here, has written this innovative PR description, changes a bunch of stuff, Lots of lines of code is extremely high pry. He would like to get it merged as fast as possible. He needs you to take 30 minutes out of your extremely busy day to review it as soon as possible. And this is probably the average reaction that someone has to getting that sort of ask from a coworker. A big PR, a lot of lines, uh, it's a lot to review. How am I gonna fit that into my day? And what if I have another feature that needs to make changes to the same piece of code as my previous feature? Well, that means I need to wait for you to review my feature. Then I have to wait for it to merge. Then I have to write more code, create another 2000 line PR. And now I'm blocked on that same cycle of review again. And then finally, my PR will be merged. So that's why you know, we and a lot of others before us that have come up with this, this idea, it's not a brand new idea to base PRs off of other PRs. You know, we ask ourselves this question, what if I don't have to wait to branch off mid? So you can see in this diagram here, um, the difference between waiting for the first feature to merge to create a second feature and stacking, where in the second diagram, you're creating your feature B directly off of feature A. So you're branching off your previous changes and you continue writing code. Um, this is a really nice diagram that our friend Gurgly over at the Pragmatic Engineer created. He runs this newsletter, if you haven't heard of it. He wrote a great article on stack diffs a few months ago. So, you know, we asked him if we could take it, but this is a really nice diagram of the time that you can save by stacking. I believe you can see my mouse, but um, if you can't, what we're basically seeing here is you, after committing to main, you create another set of code changes and you can work on those code changes while you're waiting for review on the first set. And so what this diagram is really meant to illustrate is that you can parallelize this process and you start working on the stack change, the second PR, while the first one is waiting for review, merging, et cetera, as opposed to not starting this process until this one is merged. So this is what stacking looks like on GitHub, right? Instead of having feature B merge into main, you create a branch that says feature B is based on feature A. And uh, this is a little example of the comment that Graphite creates for you. We'll show you what this looks like in practice in the demo in a second. And uh, here's what this looks like in Graphite's UI. You can see the stack starts at the bottom at your trunk branch main and goes up to A and then up to B. This is also stacking. So we kind of have been talking about this example of basing one feature on another. Um, instead of having these big 2000 line PRs for each feature, stacking also lets you split up your feature into smaller, closer to atomic units of change, possibly even fully atomic units of change. You know, we at Graphite have tried to take stacking so far to the extreme that most of our PRs are pretty much atomic. You can see that this feature here is split into four um, independent PRs stacked on top of each other that can all be reviewed separately. So in this example, we have an API spec, a server change, and a front-end change, um, and then some analytics. This is extremely helpful if you need your team's database expert to review your API layer change, or your data scientist to 
sign off on the names of your analytics events. They don't need to see this whole big PR for your feature, but instead they can review the individual PRs in your stack and parallelize that process. So as I'm kind of alluding to, stacking is more than just parallelizing and staying unblocked. Like I was getting into on the last slide, it's easier to review a smaller change than a massive one. Um, you can get better reviews. Uh, we'll get more into that in a sec. Smaller change means that because it takes less time to review, it's easier to approve. So on average, we see these changes getting reviewed faster and therefore merging faster. And this is something that we've recently been collecting a lot of data on. We have some articles up on our blog about how smaller changes merge faster. And you also will have fewer merge conflicts if you keep your changes based on the latest version of your code. Smaller changes, there's less possible lines that can conflict. You're getting everything rebased, restacked, as you'll see soon in the demo, frequently, and less resolving Git merge conflicts. No one likes that. Yeah, so like I said before, we're not the first people to come up with this. This is actually a blog post from Google. I think it might be almost 10 years old at this point. Um, CL is Google's name for PR. CL stands for changelog. And they basically, you know, Google has been one of the biggest, oldest modern engineering shops. They've done a lot of internal research on this sort of thing. And I could go through this whole list, but essentially smaller CLs are better for a wide, wide range of reasons. And we try to keep the same practice for graphite and with graphite. And you might be familiar with this classic, wow, I can't believe this tweet is over 10 years old now. <laughs> but yeah, the classic, if you submit a 10 line uh, change to your code, your coworker is gonna point out every single tiny little nitpick. But as soon as you get so big that your coworker starts getting lazy about it, it's like, all right, looks good to me, get it landed. And so, you know, I think obviously extremes aren't good in general, landing somewhere in the middle is, and stack PRs allow you to do that. This is what the world would look like if, if everyone stacked. Um, so why don't more people do this? And um, remember back at the beginning, when we had that little note for those of you who have tried this before. And, and those of you who have tried this before without using a tool like Graphite or some of the other open source tools that help you stack may know the answer to this is because it is tedious to maintain these stacks of branches manually. Number one, what if you need to rebase? Or right, if you need to change something down stack, then all of your up stack, your dependent changes need to be rebase on top of that. How do you visualize these changes? You may remember from the previous slides of the GitHub PRs, Graphite gives you this visualization of your stack, but without tooling, you don't get that. It's hard to keep track of what the dependencies of the stack are. And finally, orchestrating the merging of stacks PRs gets more and more complex as your stack gets bigger. The more PRs you have, the more merging you need to do. And so it's really a place I kind of spoiled the answer to this one, but yeah. So you'll see this in a second. The Graphite CLI allows you to modify a down stack branch that other branches depend on and then automatically restack or rebase those changes into your up stack branches. I'm using a lot of Graphite specific terminology here. Um, you'll see what that looks like in the demo. In terms of visualization, we have this nice graph that we create for you in the UI and a similar shorter version on the GitHub comment as well as um, a merge orchestration process to make sure that all of your changes merge together. If I can help in essence. So to summarize, stack changes, write smaller PRs, get better reviews, ship faster. That's what we're here to do today. I know I kind of went through kind of quickly here. Thank you to Tomas for putting these slides together, but let's jump straight into the demo. Yeah, let's take a look. Let's see how this looks in practice. Awesome. All right, let me go to my terminal here and great. Oh, it kept the same layout. Awesome. Cool. So um, here I have this demo repo that we have created in order to show you Graphite. The name, the name of the temporary directory is quite long, so it takes up a whole screen, <laughs> but that's okay. Cool. Great. So here I have this Git repository. You can tell that from my terminal prompt, but just to prove it, I'll give you a little Git status. Uh, as you can see, we're on our main branch and I have been working on a set of changes here with Graphite or imagine I have, I guess. And you can see what my repository looks like. We can see all the branches in my local checkout like this, but we immediately see that for working on stacked branches, Git on its own is not super useful because I have a bunch of branches here in my repository that are gonna correspond to pull requests, but Git doesn't have a sense of what changes depend on which other changes, which is why the first graphic command that I will show you is GT log, which gives us this graph of the dependencies of the branches in my repo. And so you can see I have this larger feature that I'm working on, kind of similar to the one that I showed in the presentation where we have the API spec, server, and front end. That's made up of a stack of three branches, as well as a couple of other smaller branches 
that I am working on simultaneously. Um, one of the things we really like about stacking is it is because you're able to manage all of these branches and keep them rebased on main, it actually makes it very easy to work on other small bug fixes at the same time. But I actually want to focus on just this stack of, of three to build this activity feed feature for now. And so I can do, I can look at just that with GT log stack just to get, um, I'm still on main, but let's say I, I check out what's at the top of the front end, GT log stack, see just that current stack of branches. Great. So uh, we also have GT LS, which is the shorter version of this looks a little bit closer to get branch, but with the, with the dependencies in the right order. So I have the stack of three branches. I've already created it, but I want to add analytics to this stack before I submit the whole thing for review. Um, so I'm just going to create a little file. It's called analytics.txt. Great. And then with Graphite, we try to simplify Git commands as much as possible. So the standard Git flow would be to do something like Git add or, or Git branch to create a new branch, then Git add, then Git commit. At this stage, we, we actually have this command called GT create. And so I can create and we'll call this, you know, feet add analytics. And that will, because I didn't stage anything, actually in, in, in the interest of simplifying Git, will prompt you to stage things so we can do that. And that will create a new branch, as you can see from GTLS, on top of my existing branch with those changes. And so now that's stacked on top. If I do GT submit, it will take this stack of branches, submit it, and then open my browser um, to edit the metadata. So this is my stack of branches. Graphite gives me a way to set the descriptions for each. For now, I'm just going to publish them. As you can see, we have these nice buttons to copy the same reviewers for each PR in the stack. Get this nice confetti, put this PR on top of the stack. And here's my stack. As you can see, I have this analytics file I created at the top of the stack. If I go down by one, here's my front end React code, my server code, and the, you know the API definition. And the really cool thing is that if I look at this PR on GitHub, I get the same visualization that allows me to kind of bounce around between the PRs in my stack for my coworkers who may not be using Graphite yet. But I also get a nice warning that says, hey, you probably want to make sure to merge this bottom PR, which doesn't have the warning, uh, before merging any of the PRs that are above it into main. Cool. So it's just a quick overview of what that looks like. I do want to get back to the CLI and show y'all what it looks like if my coworker points out a change that I should make to the PR. Great. So let's say I got a comment on the server change, a worker who noticed that I'm using the wrong port. So I can actually use GT uh, down to just navigate to the branch immediately below the one that I'm on in the stack, go down one more time to get from into server. And let's edit the server file. We'll change this three to an eight. Cool. And so now if I do a diff, we can see I have just this little change that I need to make to this PR. We have a similar to gcreate, we have a one-liner for the, or one one command way to do that as well, um, which is called gmodify. And if I run gtmodify, I get the same prompt that I got for create. I can stage those changes instantly and it will commit them to that branch and then automatically rebase the dependent branches, the upstack branches on top of them within a process that we call restacking. And so now if I, um, you know, for example, if I go back up and I open the server file, that is now updated to 8,000 in the dependent branch as well. And then if I run GTSS, which stands for stack submit, I may have used some other shortcuts at some point during this presentation. I hope I haven't yet, but I'll introduce you to them now. Uh, we have a lot of these one and two character shortcuts for graphite commands that you can use. So SS stands for submitting my stack. And so if I do that, Graphite is smart enough to realize that, hey, we didn't change the first PR in the stack, but we did update the server and PR. And because front end and analytics are up stack of that, we updated those as well. And so we need to update all of their PRs. Um, and so if I went back to the web app, you would see those PRs updated there as well. Cool. Any questions so far? I feel like this is a good place to look there. Seems like Kenny is answering stuff in the channel. Workflow shown here and in the docs leads to one commit per branch. Makes sense to me. But do you ever see a situation where more than one commit per branch makes sense? Great question. Yeah, so I kind of glossed over it a little in the demo so far, but that GT modify command that I just ran does amend the single commit on the branch. So by default, GT create creates a branch with one commit. GT modify amends the single commit on that branch to include those changes. And the reasoning as to why we do this is kind of in the interest of keeping changes 
atomic and like modeling as, you know, every PR is its own individual change. We update them over time. To us, it honestly doesn't really matter whether something is an amend or a commit. And so defaulting to amend and one commit per branch seems like a reasonable thing to do um, because in cases where you have to, you have like rebase conflicts to resolve from one branch to another. Um, if the same file is changed multiple times. So what, what's an example I can come up with here? Like, let's say that I changed that 3000 to an 8,000 and then back to a 5,000, right? And then I went down to a branch before that one and changed the same part of the code. I would need to resolve the conflicts for each commit as I did the restack, as opposed to just doing it once if I had one commit. And so it does generally make the process of dealing with the Git stuff easier if you squash everything down into one commit. We actually have a command that allows you to do that called GT squash if you ever are trying to keep things one commit but end up with multiple. With that said, all of our tooling is built such that all of the commands, all of the restacking, all of the more advanced stuff that you can do works with any number of commits on a branch. So I think originally when when we started building this tool, a lot of a lot of us had come from Facebook where they actually their tooling actually allows you to do stacks of commits. And so the one commit per branch thing felt very natural. But especially I think we 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 saw when people were adopting Graphite, when their coworkers weren't familiar with stacking, their coworkers still wanted to be able to review commit by commit. Um, and so that's why we built the tooling to support the either single or multi-commit branches. So I hope that answers the question fully. Yeah, if anyone has any further questions, happy to happy to dive into those as well. Normally during our demos, we spend the whole time like going through features and stuff, but the point of this interactive thing is to, is to answer questions. I could, I could talk about this stuff all day, honestly. All right, but that's all for now. I will jump into showing a few more features of the web interface and some other parts of our product. Um, and then maybe we'll jump back to CLI if we get other questions there. Great. So kind of showed the main view of the Graphite PR page with the stack, the code. You also get the timeline and any review comments and updates to the PR that you would see on like the main page of the GitHub PR page or over here on the right. We have all the stuff that GitHub has on the right here. The main change that we that we believe is, is, is a value add to the view that GitHub gives you is having the code up front and being able to just open the PR and immediately see the code like this, especially in a world where your PRs are smaller. You know, this one, you know, 32 lines is actually like a pretty decent example of like what a PR on our team where we where we stack constantly looks like, especially with with smaller PRs where the code does a lot of the explaining, we want to make it really easy to just get to the code, be able to leave comments on it immediately and make the process of your coworker approving your PR as easy as possible. So we, we do actually have some updates coming to this page, you know, I'll, I'll show you one of them right now, actually, while we're here. We're moving the file tree. I have both right now, so it's kind of ugly, but we, we have this file tree that's like historically been kind of hidden on the left here. We're kind of working on this new file tree here that allows you to kind of keep this open on the left while you have the comments on the right, it has its own place. We'll keep track of, you know, how many files you've seen. If there were more folders here, the, the UI of the tree is a little bit nicer. We have filters that we're adding here. So that's something exciting. Some other things that we have on the website, one of my favorite features, I think one of everyone on the team's favorite features is the PR inbox. And so this is a really, really nice just homepage for things I need to do as an engineer on my team, right? I can see all of the PRs that need my review. I actually created a custom section here just to keep track of like, what folks on the team are working on, but I may not be directly requested on. Uh, this is not one of the default filters. Most of the rest of these we do give you by default. So it needs a review. Re return to you would be PRs that you know, someone has left a review on that I need to like make changes to. Approved are the PRs that I need to merge. We have the PRs that are merging. Um, the PRs that I submitted and I'm waiting for review on. My drafts, waiting for authors that I left comments on that I'm waiting for someone to respond to. And so the nice thing about all these is like I mentioned, this is fully customizable, right? So when I want, went to create this not requested filter for myself, I was like, give me all the PRs that I didn't create that are open, not draft or merging, where I am not one of the requested or previous reviewers. And we have this really powerful system of filters. We sync all of this data from GitHub to provide you a really nice experience here and, and try to make this as powerful as possible. We allow you to share these filters with your coworkers as well, which is super helpful if you like have a really nice filter that applies to exactly the PRs that you need for a specific project. And you want to make sure that everyone sees all the PRs going on for that project. Cool. So just going down the left nav here, we also have a merge queue. Um, and so this is a feature that is most useful if, you know, 
everyone on your team is starting to use stacked PRs, you're kind of more bought into Graphite, you can have a single source of truth for what is the PR that is next to merge into my main branch. And you can see the history of all the PRs that emerge, what's currently merging. The merge key is really nice because we allow you to merge stacks as one unit. So you can see that like you know, my coworker Brendan has two, two PRs stacked here, where CI is running for both of them together. They will merge together, get these nice statistics at the top, this history of you know what's, what's merged successfully, what's failed. You can see that like, this PR failed and it's upstack PRs like were then removed from the merge queue. So you know, we really love this. A lot of our longtime customers, our bigger companies that are using us really love this feature. And uh, yeah, we also have this new feature called automations. I think Greg is going to talk about it a little bit more in his presentation. So I won't um, dive too deep on it now, but it's basically an if this, then that system as the diagram says. And then we also give you a way to view these insights for your team. So you can see, you know, what, what kind of stuff is merging, how fast you're or like how many PRs are merging, how many PRs are merging per engineer, like look over time and see what the rate of review is, all that sort of stuff. And then we also have notifications. You get this useful bell for, you know, what you need to look at on the left. And then you also have, if I can pull up Slack, we have all of those notifications on the left side of my screen in the app going or coming into my Slack DMs as well. And so you can see here, Graphite will message me every time a comment is made on one of my PRs, that it's merged, et cetera. And if I can find a good example, I will show you one of my favorite features of the Slack notifications. I guess no one has asked me to review a short enough PR recently, but if a PR is short enough, modifies few enough files. Oh, here we go. Great. So you can actually get a view of the diff in the thread. And if this PR hadn't already been merged, I would be able to approve it directly from Slack, which is really, really nice. Cool, awesome. So yeah, we're, we're a little bit over now. There's probably some more stuff on the web app that, uh, that we could show that I haven't gotten to yet, but I wanna give time for more questions and for Greg to talk about some of the upcoming features that we're working on. So I'll pass it over to him. Awesome, Jacob, thanks for uh, giving an overview. Maybe before we transition, I see one more question in the chat. Uh, maybe you can tackle answering and then I can talk about some of the new and upcoming features. Yeah, sure, great. I have a library that I use only during development for debugging. I wanna keep this on a separate branch and never push to company code base remote. How can I use stacks to always make it part of my feature branch during development? Got it. Okay. So I think this is something that we don't have a great answer to today, but I, I will tell you what I would do, which I think will be helpful. And then I'll tell you about something that we're working on that I think will actually make this a lot easier for you. So what I would do today is I would keep that branch locally um, as a graphite branch, like as a graphite track branch based on main. Um, and when you need it during development, you can use GT move to move your whole stack that you're working on onto that branch you know, run your development stuff and then move it back onto main, submit it and keep it updated. So obviously that's probably not the ideal experience that you're looking for, um, but it is something I've done before. For example, with like a script that allows me to query the database to get some information that I'll like move on top of my stack. Actually, I guess you could you could do it either way, right? You could either move your stack on top of that or move that on top of your stack. Um, either one should work as long as they don't conflict with each other. But as I was saying, just saw a question. Uh, but as I was saying, the, the move command should make that pretty easy, especially if there's no conflicts between that and the stuff that you're currently working on. We are working on, and, and this is something we're still, you know, figuring out with users, figuring out the requirements for, a system that allows you to have your stacks based on one branch locally, but merge into another branch remotely. This is something that a lot of users who have cases like, I have a branch that I know tests have passed on, that trail slightly behind my main branch want so that they can work off of that trailing branch, which is often called green, if, if folks are familiar with that terminology, so that folks can base their changes on green, but still have their stacks target main when they merge them. And so I actually believe that when we build the support app for that, it should be able to handle your case as well, because you could base your branches locally off of that, like, you know, local set of changes that you have to test stuff in development and then still merge it into your actual trunk remotely. So that's a good call out. I'll definitely keep that in mind for while we're working on that. Cause I think we're going to be starting work on that in the next couple of weeks. And then 
quick answer to the question from one of our one of our longtime users who we were we were working with a while ago. Unfortunately, their company had to move off GitHub. So it's been a while since I've seen you. Nice to see you again. Why did I cut my hair? I just I just really like to change it up. I don't have a great answer for you other than that. I did one <laughs> years cultivating it. One cop out answer that I like to give is I moved to LA where the weather is a lot warmer, and so it, it's just nicer to have it shorter. But the real answer is I just I just changed my mind a lot. Of course, Saha. <laughs> awesome. Okay. With that, please keep please keep submitting questions. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of our new and upcoming features, and and then we'll just answer any remaining questions at the end. So feel free to feed them into the chat. So that being said, I have a small set of slides here. So some of the new features, my new, I'll define it in two terms. We have a couple of things I'll talk about that are new as of you know roughly the last three months. And then we have things that are new as of the last couple of weeks. And then lastly, I'll talk about things that are coming out in the next few months. So things in the last, as of this year, we're in March right now, we have automations. Jacob showed this off really briefly, but automations is essentially if this, then that triggers for things within your code base. We're not the first to invent this. Ex-Facebookers might be familiar with Butterfly Bot or Herald. There's open source libraries like Danger and other tools that let you try to code this into your code base. But Regardless, we felt like there was a meaningful need and desire for really easy GUI based system to say, hey, if something happens, you know, if I put up a pull request, automatically add all of my teammates. Shockingly simple feature. To my knowledge, you can't actually do this in vanilla GitHub. Or a really silly one that a lot of my multiple people on this team have set up is if I create a pull request, automatically a cousin Greg meme to my pull request, just to remind me. We have other ones. We've, you know, if someone makes a, a certain DB migration, automatically add a comment to that pull request, reminding them of some of the procedures that are required in that DB migration. Maybe if you touch a certain file path or, or, or code regex, or if a CI passes, maybe send me a notification privately on Slack. There's a lot of powerful he things here. One of the reasons I want to flag this, this is both new, this is in beta. We're really excited for folks to try this out more. Already 200 plus companies have set these up. But our call here really is we're looking to brainstorm more triggers and actions. So if there's specific things that you wish you could do with automations, but you can't quite pull off right now, let us know and we can add and extend them to the platform. Speaking of extending, the next thing I want to show off is extensions. So we've had a couple of these for a while, but we've kind of clustered them together. And over the last year, we've launched the Mac mini bar app. So we've now put these into one place in the in the web UI so you can find them all. The Mac menu bar app is my favorite of these so far. It's essentially the pull request inbox, but in a really small, really simple uh, read-only uh, menu bar. And you can see, like I'm looking at my screen right now, I can see I have seven pull requests that need my attention. I can open that. I can see the exact same sections that I customized through the web UI. And then here you can also find our Chrome extension, which just adds a couple of graphite actions to the GitHub page. Our VS Code extension, which is a full GUI of everything Jacob showed you on the CLI for folks who prefer a GUI experience in VS Code. We let you be able to pull off all those actions. And then that Slack app that Jacob already showed. So things we're looking for feedback here, Mac mini bar app and the VS Code extension. Please give them a try. Let us know if they're missing anything, if there's ways we can improve them. Uh, third thing I wanna show off here is our merge queue, but specifically within our merge queue, parallel CI. So we've had our merge queue for a while and we've been making continuous investments and improvements to it. And one of the most straightforward things is we're trying to make it faster. Now, merge queues are slightly limited by the fact that they're speed limited by the CI that's running to ensure consistency. That's kind of the whole point. But what we've added is the ability to run parallel CI. So that means that say, if you configure it as such, can kick off for every item in the queue, essentially optimistically assuming that the current order of the queue will be correct. And if nothing gets evicted during, during that current sequence, then as soon as the CIs are complete, we can start merging in that stack. What that means, or mer merging in the queue, I should say. What that means in practice is your CI duration will pretty much be the only limiting factor for the queue at that point forward. And it's not how many things are in the queue. If your CI takes 10 minutes and you enqueue 10 things, well, they're all gonna kick off parallel CIs and you don't wait hundred minutes, you're gonna wait 10 minutes, Hopefully they'll all pass as if it's not too flaky. And then you can just start immediately merging through them. So in practice, what do we see? We see we've seen folks who've turned on this beta feature rapidly speed up their merge queues and really quickly approach the floor, which is like the, the time of a single CI execution. Now, like I said, this is early, it's beta. There's different ways we could have implemented this implemented this, we chose one path, but we're looking for feedback. So let us know, give it a try, see if it works for your repo settings, your organization's patterns. And we have more to come on this. So those are some of the things we launched in the last three months. I wanna talk about some things we launched in the last couple of weeks. Uh, these are a little bit smaller, but these are just really cutting edge. So we updated the review bar on the pull request page to make it easier to quickly take actions. 
Everything, of course, is hot linked. If you're ever curious about what the shortcuts are on the web page, just do a shift, a shift slash, essentially a question mark on your keyboard, and you should get an explanation of all of our shortcuts. We added the ability to rerun just all the failed CI with a single button. Before, you had to rerun them one at a time or all. Now we gave you just a convenience button for rerunning just the ones that failed. But we've updated and improved the stack visualization within the Graphite UI. Uh, this may look similar, you know, if you've just started using the product, but if you've been using it for a long time, we've tried to give this a fresh coat of paint and make it clean as clean as possible. We've also recently updated the, the same stack visualization on GitHub to try and simplify it and clean it up a little bit. A, a small nicety, but something powerful. We've added the ability, so if CI is failing on an individual pull request you're looking at, we can also let you know that it's failing down stack as well. And that's really nifty because oftentimes if you're working on a larger stack of changes and you see something failing, the first question you have is, did I did I break it in this PR or did I break it somewhere down stack? And so right now we're just trying to surface that information so you can find the lowest pull request where it actually broke. And that's probably where you need to fix that breaking test. And lastly, as I promised, here are a couple of things the team is working on. This is not comprehensive, but a couple of things we want to call out that we're hoping to ship in the next couple of months. So top of the list, I, I have two GT commands for all the GT lovers out there. Um, Jacob himself may be involved in the creation of some of these, but first one is a much requested GT undo. We want to implement a way to essentially just control Z the last or potentially even Git command. We'll see how we implement it, but definitely graphite command so that if you do something messy, if you do something dangerous, if you mess up the state of your repo, which we understand happens, you have some way to undo and restore state back to where you were. Much requested, it's very obvious. I think it can help a lot of people get around foot guns. Next one here is a better implementation of GT split. We already have one, which is pretty useful if you have a single commit or a single pull request and you wanna break it out into a stack. Right now we can we split on a per hunk basis and we let you do almost a git add dash git add dash p style acceptance of different hunks and we can break that apart. That's what exists today, but we think we can do better. We've seen like many things, we, I think we've seen better at internal tooling at Facebook. And we wanna give this a fresh coat of paint, make it much more powerful in selecting different files and lines and what might be split across potential different pull requests. And we're even looking at using some of the recent LLMs and open AI stuff to see if we can help use AI to suggest a split but make sure the, the user still has a chance to go and edit and confirm that split. More things on here, we have, we're have we aiming to try and do better multi-trunk support. Jacob already talked about this a little bit, so I won't dig in too much, but right now Graphite is pretty opinionated that you have a single trunk that you're merging into. And the reality is we know a lot of teams and different companies might have multiple multiple trunks. They may be doing you know a dev and a main branch. They might have a green branch. They might have things that are, that are not even, that are just custom to themselves, individual users, as someone in the chat said. So we want to understand this and we want to add better support for this. And that means making small, small targeted changes, both to the UI and also the under the hood and both the CLI and probably the website. We want to add better support for large pull requests. We know that we are, we are very aware of the fact that if you load a massive, not just massive PR, but a massive file within a pull request, our UI just cripples to, to a slow a slow death. Why is that the case? Honestly, we're doing we're we're our current implementation is sending down the entire the entire diff and many of the contexts around that, which happens to explode in size if you load a really large file. And essentially our web browser runs out of memory when you when you do this. It doesn't have to be that way. There's things we can do to make, increase the performance around that. So we're gonna take a stab. Last couple of things here, we, we are implementing a system to let you define merge requirements in Graphite. We don't have a formal name for this yet, but essentially we, we want to make it really easy for you to have powerful and complex logic about what is allowed to be merged and what, what isn't, whether in your merge queue or whether you're just pressing the merge button. Uh, a really good example of this is, you know, you may want to have different requirements for what tests are passing, depending on what files in the same repository were changed. Right now, this is actually kind of hard to do in GitHub Actions, for example. You, you can technically pull it off if you do some hacky YAML logic, but we want to make it really simple to give you more powerful rules than the default branch protection rules give you. Last couple things, merge queue, I said we were going to make even further investments beyond parallel. We're working on building batching and other features. This is all in the vein of helping save on time and save on CI costs to keep the merge queue moving as quickly as possible. And then we're looking at allowing for there to be multiple queues within the same repository. We've heard from users that uh, they often work within a monorepo, but they may just be working within a subfolder within that that has different requirements and they don't even want to be in the same queue. A classic example is like a data scientist working on markdown files or simple scripts and they're within a larger repository and they want to quickly be able to merge in those code changes without being in the same queue as maybe the grander monorepo. So 
I moved through that pretty quickly, but that's an overview of some of the features that we've recently launched and that are coming down the pipeline. Let us know if you have any questions. I see one comment here saying that split on VS Code would be amazing. Something we're thinking about. I think VS Code, it's a powerful GUI. So it's split is one of the most visual possible features. Our intention right now is probably to implement it on the CLI first because that happens to be where a majority of users are. But we also want to make sure we have the best possible experience. And if that ends up being in VS Code, and if VS Code gets more and more users, we'll make sure we try and mirror that feature over. So the best way to uh, have, have Split come out on VS Code and help us prioritize internally is to try out the VS Code more, fall in love with it. And as we see those user numbers count, user numbers climb, we'll make sure to, to get Split onto VS Code as well. I will call out that the internal discussion around this has gone back and forth yeah. between I and VS Code a lot. And what Greg is saying is true. Like we, we do just see a lot more users on the CLI, but recently someone made the point to me that like, if split were a lot better in VS code, that would be a reason for people who might be, you know, more focused on the CLI right now to pick up VS code. And so true. there is still a chance that, that we would do it first. Like Greg, Greg said, we're still in the early days of planning this. So uh, whichever it is, it will be in both eventually. Right. And so it's just a matter of what makes the most sense for us as we Yeah, feel free to get noisy in our in our Graphite community Slack channel. You can find that at community.graphite.dev. Yeah. Go bother us about it and that'll help prioritize it on our roadmap as well. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, like all these decisions are made first and foremost from user feedback. The numbers are just there to help uh, help confirm what we're hearing from you guys. So yeah, there's one more question on automations that Chandra had, Greg. Oh great. Can automations make API requests? Interesting. As like the action. Um, not currently, but this is, I mean, this is why I'm asking you all. That's, that's a great, that's a great idea of what we could do. I think it would be really powerful. So, you know, automation, it's a trigger and an action. It'd be really powerful if we had a generic action, which is essentially execute webhook or, you know, make, make API call to the outside world. And that would allow, I think, users to get extremely custom with what, with what's happening there. I have no qualms off the top of my head. That's a great request. We don't currently have support for it, but possibly we should. So at this point, the rest of the time, we have eight minutes left, it's just open-ended. So if anyone who's been following along, if you have questions, throw them in the chat right now and Jacob and I can debate them. Like Our that. graphic community is amazing. We, we, we started this just like Slack community and it's climbed into the thousands and thousands of people over the years. And but but to date, and Jacob is probably one of the biggest champions of this, we've been able to maintain a pretty good job of having all the people on our team stay present, constantly reading them, responding to messages on that. Anytime we have a bug or an outage, man, that community is like faster than our data data dog alerts. And we see there's not been a single outage where yeah. we have gotten the status page up before people have asked about it. Yeah, yeah. Usually it's like it's like I'll see two notifications pop across my screen simultaneously. It's like pager duty and then also graphite community. I'm like, yep, we're definitely down. <laughs> this is it's like what, this are, is not... what are we paying pager duty for at this point, right? Exactly. We've outsourced it. <laughs> No, the graphic community is amazing. It also reminds me of why it's so fun to work on DevTools because our user base are engineers. We are engineers as the creators. And there's just there's just no middleman of communication. People are so blunt in a good way. Like if we if there's a problem, someone will open up like the the console, they'll share the logs, they'll suggest how we could have actually fixed it. Some people will, they'll dig into both the code, they'll also dig into like our UI models. We've had folks on napkins draw out suggested wireframes for how features should look versus how they do look and we love it and every one of those messages gets read gets reshared internally for us so just you can't send enough of it i'm seeing a oh. great one on the blog post you just put up greg yes sarah thank you thank you for the wonderful compliment i've been trying to write more and i think last week i wrote about a real practice we do yeah so we d delete employee accounts and i want to be very clear because i may not have been clear i, I tried to be clear i may not have been clear enough in the blog post we don't delete people on Gusto and remove them from the company and deactivate their badges so they have to struggle to get in the office every day. I, I felt like some of the Reddit comments were like perceiving it as that, but we do delete the Graphite account of the employee. By daily, we mean one person a day. So on, on average across a bigger team, it's, it only hits you every few weeks. I don't know, Jacob, how, how, how annoying is it versus how beneficial to have your account deleted? Well, I, I commented this in, in one of the threads or maybe on Twitter somewhere, I can't remember at this point, but somehow I've gone like a month without my account getting deleted for whatever reason, you know, luck of the draw. I promise I didn't like change the code or anything to exclude my name from the list, but it hasn't affected me too badly recently. No, I mean, the, the real answer here is at the end of the day, like, so 
we auth solely with GitHub, right? So uh, your GitHub account is your graphite identity. And so that's great in a lot of ways for us because it means like the only auth we have to manage is, is storing your token and like your GitHub identity is one-to-one -one with who you are. On the downside, it means setting all of that up in onboarding can be a really confusing experience. And it took us years to get right, honestly. Like I, I think we we had a project on the roadmap for onboarding from before I joined the company, you know, to still, it's still staffed, right? And so that's why the onboarding thing is, has been so important for us to get right, is getting that flow with GitHub, especially because it's giving access to your code, um, right? So getting that flow right has been really important for us, which is why we, we do this. But because it is just that layer on top of GitHub, the only thing you're really setting up is like, what are the repos you're syncing to Graphite? What are the review queue filters? You know, connecting to Slack and setting up your notifications. So it probably takes folks like five, 10 minutes to set it back up when they get reset. It's not not too bad, but people all the time will like notice issues and, and things in onboarding because of this that would just be really, really hard to catch with manual testing. Yeah, there's some tricky bits too. Like I remember we had a question internally, we were like, should we delete you know, should we just make you go through onboarding or should we actually like delete, like you said, like your your pull request inbox filters? And it's like, you know, I want to go all the way. And I want to actually delete, you know, your custom settings because I want once a month, I want a person on the team to actually remember how easy or how annoying is it to set up these filters? Because there's hundreds of people every day who have to go through this flow and set these things up. And if we as like most expert users building this can't do it once in a while, because what would happen, what we saw actually what would happen is whatever surfaces the employees were using the least, even if they were like functionally correct, they would become the roughest and the ugliest. And it was like out of sight, out of mind. And by reminding people like, oh yeah, like setting your filters is actually really painful and really annoying. So someone would actually be motivated to improve it or, you know, we'd work with product on our, on our team to get on a roadmap to actually clean it up. There's there's just there's little that beats you know, actually trying to go through the common of your product. And we dog food it so much that the only thing up to this point that we weren't actually going through was resetting up from scratch because we were such big users. So, yeah, I would say we've caught maybe like 20 bugs and uh, tons of small nits and design improvements. Yeah, I mean, I think, I don't know, this is my experience. I could be totally off base with this, but I think the double edged thorn of working on dev tools is on the one hand, you know, you get to dog, you get to dog food it every day. But on the other hand, like that barely makes up for like how complex these tools get. Right. And so, like, because we're so used to, dog fooding all the other parts of our product other than onboarding, that was the thing that ended up needing the most like forceful uh, process around making sure that it gets looked at. We got one more question. Does merge queue work for larger orgs or is it only for smaller teams? It works for large orgs. We've seen it work for, it, it definitely works for small teams. We've seen it work for as small of teams as like two or three people in which we question, do you need a merge queue? Uh, it scales up to a hundred people in a repo. It scales up to a thousand people in a repo, up to 5,000 people in a repo. And not only does it work, it actually becomes pretty beneficial. I think the point of merge queues are to avoid the collisions that you start having at scale within a large mono repo. Now, what starts becoming challenging is if you have a thousand people in a repository all committing to the same merge queue, you are adding a bit of a wait time. There's a bit of a queue. And that's why we've prioritized building what I showed off, which is the parallel parallelization, the batching, things that are going to help make sure that even if there's hundreds of commits getting in queued, you can still proceed through that faster than sequentially iterating on all the CI times. Merge queues are great. In fact, not only do they work for larger orgs, they're, they're recommended for larger orgs. Yeah. I mean, many of the features, like we've kind of grown as our customers have, have grown, right? And so, you know, we started building Merge for ourselves with a team of like 10-ish engineers. And then we kind of worked with some design partners to get up to like the 50 plus committer sizes. And now some of the features we're building, like we're working with with some customers that have hundreds and hundreds and close to thousands. I, th I, don't, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but we must yeah. have some companies that we're working with that have over a thousand people um, that we're building these features for. Yeah, strongly, if you're not using it already, uh, I strongly recommend enabling it, giving it a try. It pretty much just adds a safety buffer to your repository, reduces the merge conflicts. And there are different merge queues. I know GitHub has a merge queue. There's other companies who offer it. To some degree, it's a commodity, but the, the, the inspiration for building it ourselves was that no one else had a merge queue that was compatible with stacks. And we are very passionate about the stacking workflow and about many small code changes going out the door quickly. And you need the merge queue to be able to take into consideration that dependency graph, that there's contiguous ordering. If one gets evicted, evict them all, that they can be merged in together. It needs to be aware of the stacking. And we couldn't find a different merge queue that was compatible with that. So we built our own. And in the process, it's it's becoming and become one of the most featureful merge queues. 
But we want to take it even further. So it's just something we're continuously staffing and continuously looking for feedback to make it the most powerful merge queue available. Awesome. Well, we're, I know we're just about at time. So I think this is a good place to pause the stream here. But thank you all for attending the, the Graphite webinar. We plan to try and do these more routinely. I think we'll try and send out a feedback survey after this. Please let us know what was useful, uh, what kind of content you're looking for in the future. And, and yeah, thank you so much all for listening in. Thanks all. Bye.